What you guys today we're taking a look at things to consider before you switch to Linux. Now there's quite a few different options available for Linux. Linux Mint is one of the ones that a lot of people always recommend. Now of course if you ask any Linux user they're going to all have their own opinion but Linux Mint is a good option. Zorin OS is another great option for people that are transitioning over from Windows to Linux. Now again this is one of my go-to that I recommend to people all the time because I do believe it is one of the best options available to them. Pop OS is another viable option available to people. And let me know in the comments section what versions of Linux you would offer to people, because I think people that are transitioning over to Windows will want to know all this useful information. Manjaro is another option that I would put up there for a valid alternative to Windows operating systems. And there's plenty of others to choose from. Just know one thing that Windows is not Linux. They're both different operating systems. So switching to Linux from Windows requires a careful consideration. There's some key differences, including the user interface, software compatibility, and how the system is managed. Linux offers a highly customizable and open source experience, but it may lack direct compatibility with some of Windows specific types of software and hardware. So you definitely want to try that out. I would definitely suggest that you download a few distros like I'm showing you right here and installing them into a virtual machine. So you don't have to install them fully. You can either install them into a virtual machine or you can try them in a live environment. I'll show you that in a second once we get this part set up. But this is an important part because what this is going to do is allow you to test the actual distros out and be able to see which one you prefer. And there's plenty to choose from. Sometimes people say there's too much choice instead of just concentrating on a few uh, good ones. But you can see here, this is the option you're going to get once you boot up for the very first time. There will be a box popping up saying try Zorin OS or install Zorin OS. This is just for Zorin. It will do this for every different version of distro that you're going to try. So you can either try it or install it. I'm going to go ahead and install it and we're going to get to the desktop and take a look at it. I made videos showing you how to install this onto a virtual machine before and it's pretty straightforward. So you want to test your hardware to ensure that all your peripherals are working properly, like your keyboard, mouse, and stuff like that. It looks exactly like Windows, but it's Linux. You've got all of the same features as you would have on Windows. So this should be very familiar to you. Test all your peripherals, like your printers, your scanners, your mouse, keyboard. Make sure everything is working exactly how it should be. Once you're happy that everything works, you can then commit with the install once you find the one that suits you. You've got all the same features like dark mode, light mode, and you can change all your audio here. There's plenty to choose from, the same as you would have on Windows. You've got software updaters. This will update all the software and keep it all fully updated. While we're on the software subject, make sure you make a full list of all the software that you use on Windows. If any of this software is mission critical stuff, i.e. you must have it working, you need to make sure that that is compatible with Linux. You're going to need to sign in quite a bit, so get used to that as well. But once you've got all of your software list down, a lot of the software may not work. Unfortunately, with Linux, there's going to be a major difference between what software runs on Linux and what runs on Windows. So you're going to have to accept at some point that some software that used to work on Windows is simply not going to work on Linux. They have plenty of alternatives and you're just going to have to either get used to it or Linux is not for you. So let me just give you an example. Camtasia Studio does not work on Linux. Adobe Photoshop doesn't work on Linux. Microsoft Office doesn't work on Linux. I'm not running Linux down. I'm just telling you there is tons of different software that is not compatible with Linux and you will need to find alternatives. Now there is alternatives available and you're just going to have to either adapt to using that new software or it's just not an option for you. Now, if you work with companies and they require certain documents, i.e. let's just say Photoshop, and they require all their stuff in Photoshop and you're using GIMP, then it might not work for you. So just take all that into account. 
Blender works in Windows and it also works in Linux. Audacity works in Linux and it also works in Windows. So there is some software that is compatible, but there is going to be some that isn't. Next, I would say you need to have a willingness to learn the operating system because Linux is not Windows. Regardless of people saying it's easy, you are going to have to adapt and learn a new operating system. If you've been using Windows for many years and now you've just come on to Linux, then it's going to be different and you're just going to have to navigate around the operating system and get used to it. And it will take a bit of time to adjust. So accept that there will be a slight learning curve when switching to Linux and you may need to make some small adjustments. But Linux community is generally very helpful if you go straight to the source. If you're asking for help in YouTube comments and places like that, it's just full of Linux trolls. Now, there is some genuine people that use Linux and they do watch my channel and they are not trolling and they are watching because they use probably both operating systems. So try to ask people that are willing to help you and just don't waste your time with trolls. Now, there is tons of software out there that you can use. Linux has literally tons and tons of different types of software. So do your research and have a look. Navigate around the computer, get used to using the computer. First thing you need to do is make sure you understand how to back up your computer. You can use something like TimeShift or something like that to learn how to back up inside Linux because it is different to Windows. Now, if a piece of hardware doesn't work and it's not compatible, you may be able to get a Linux driver for it to make it work. So always do your research. Regardless of what people tell you, familiarize yourself with the terminal. It's no different to Windows, command prompt and places like that. The commands are going to be different, but just basically understand some of the basic commands. And once you understand it, you may need them sometimes. And understanding the terminal or command line will be very helpful at troubleshooting and also other advanced tasks. Someone might instruct you to run a couple of commands to fix something, and at least you've familiarized yourself with the terminal. It's not going to be used all the time, but it is useful to understand some basic commands because you'll never know when you're going to need it because eventually you may have to go in there just like you used to go into the terminal or command line or PowerShell with Windows. Next, if you're a gamer, make sure that some of the games that you like playing or all of the games you like playing work on Linux. You can check the compatibility list right here and they will give you an in-depth list of what works and what don't work. Now, some games probably are not going to work, but a lot of games will work. And you just have to make that tough decision on whether that's good enough for you. You can either dual boot Windows with Linux and boot into Windows to play your games Windows is a better platform for playing games, there's no doubt about that, but Linux has come on a long way. Now, we'll give you this bit of advice for free, and it's my opinion, if you have a virtual machine and you've installed Windows inside Linux and you're using that virtual machine for your software and you're spending more time in that virtual machine than you are in Linux itself, then Linux is not for you. Because if you're spending more time in a virtual machine with Windows on it than you are actually in Linux, then obviously you're not fully transitioned over to Linux. Linux has plenty of other options available for software. You're just going to have to get used to it because it is a completely different operating system. So embrace it and use it. And it doesn't matter what operating system you use, whether you use Windows or whether you use Linux or Mac OS, it really doesn't matter. Don't get caught up in all the drama on the internet. It's just not worth it. Anyway, I think that's going to be about it. Hopefully, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments section down below. There will be some civil Linux users down there that will give you some information and hopefully help you make the right choices. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support and I shall catch you in the very next video or I'll see you on the Discord server. The link should be in the video description. Have a lovely day and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now.